In 2019, I set out to walk the Tour de Mont Blanc, a 180 km trail that encircles the Mont Blanc Massif through France, Italy and Switzerland. It was an unforgettable adventure that opened my eyes to the immense beauty of the Alps. Yet it was during these innocent southern days that I found my ideas evolving and morphing into something new, a much bigger and altogether different challenge. One day, I vowed, I would stand on top of Mont Blanc, the highest mountain in Western Europe. So here I am, back in Chamonix four years later. There is a long week ahead of us, but ultimately the goal is the summit of Mont Blanc, 4,810 meters above sea level. Slightly intimidating, very imposing, but the excitement levels are off the scale. I just can't wait to get started. My name is Abby. I'm deeply passionate about all things wild and have made it my mission to explore and document many of the world's most stunning landscapes through human powered adventure. Each quest is totally unique. Some traverse exposed moorlands and rugged mountaintops. Others whiz through bustling market towns and historical cities. They see me dive down deep amongst marine life, follow world-renowned archaeological discoveries, and travel through some of the most tranquil valleys and mystical forests accessible only on foot. My goal is always one of discovery and awareness. Getting outside is now more important than ever before, with obesity rates maintaining record highs and mental health issues affecting over one in four individuals. In building an archive of films, I aim to leave you looking for a challenge, ready to break free from the monotony of everyday life and be inspired by nature enough to want to give back. Ultimately, I want to see you don your adventure boots and spend more time in the wild for the benefit of mental and physical health. I've realised that you don't have to do something crazy or radical to change how you feel about your life. You just have to get up and get out. I face my own trials with mental ill health and chronic pain, as no doubt you'll see on my travels. But alongside building a strong support network, getting outside and taking the time to reconnect with nature has helped me move further along the road of personal discovery. So, here's me inviting you to join me on my adventures as I explore this awe-inspiring planet. There will be hardships along the way, and we're not guaranteed to succeed. But it takes a brave heart and a courageous soul to commit to the unknown. Now all you have to do is decide that you want it more than you are afraid of it. Are you ready? Let's go! So I found packing for this trip quite difficult, uh, mainly because I have gear coming out of my ears when it comes to through hiking and long distance backpacking. But alpinism and mountaineering is slightly different in a sense of you need more technical kit, things like harnesses and crampons and belay jackets and soft shell insulating trousers, a rucksack that fits everything in, there's helmets, there's B3 boots, on and on and on the list goes. It's not quite as <laughs> simple as backpacking and through hiking. Um, so yeah, I found it a little bit stressful at times, but the great thing is, is that I'm climbing with a company called Adventure Base who are fully running and supporting this trip, which is amazing. And they have been super, super helpful pre-trip when it comes to managing my gear stresses. Um, that being said, I have got 20 minutes to get out of this room. So I'm going to shove everything back into this suitcase, having now had a look at it all again, um, hit the town. And then later on this evening, I'm going to be meeting my team for the first time, my guides for the first time. And I cannot even begin to express just how excited I'm really feeling. It was nice to shove everything back into my suitcase and get out to explore Chamonix, the perfect base for such an adventure. Chamonix is said to be the birthplace of mountaineering in the Alps and is one of the oldest ski resorts in France. Not that I was planning on doing any of that. It's a bustling place filled with cafes, outdoor shops and fascinating architecture, as well as an abundance of artworks and statues nodding towards Jacques Balmont and Michael Packard, hosts of the first recorded ascents of Mont Blanc in 1786 
and to Horace Saussure, a Swiss naturalist who had tried to summit 26 years earlier. Whether you're a keen walker or coffee fanatic, geological mastermind or lover of wildflowers, there really is something for everybody in Chamonix. I managed to find the final pieces of kit I needed for the challenge ahead before heading to the adventure base accommodation. Good morning, folks. So the rest of the team are just having breakfast and I've just snipped outside to say good morning. <laughs> um, I'm expressing far more energy than I feel. Um, I barely slept at all last night. Uh, I also kept my roommate awake a lot because I was just so, so anxious, quite frankly. Um, my head was spinning and racing and I just felt really so much tension in my shoulders. Um, I couldn't breathe properly. I was just really very panicked. Um, and I don't know why I think you know, my, my, our guide is great, the group is great. We met everybody last night during the briefing, but I think I think to a degree, some of what I'm feeling is very natural. I'm about to go and tackle Gran Paradiso, which is a very high mountain in Italy. Um, but I think it's also ridiculous, as my coach says, I am capable, I have the skills, I have the abilities, I have the mental capacity to tackle this. And the beautiful thing is that today is literally just a hike up to the first hut um, on Grand Parody, so we'll arrive there for lunchtime, skills later, whatever, and I know that I can do that. Um, I think it's just all so out of my comfort range. It's I'm used to long distance hiking. If you literally just plonked me somewhere and said, walk 200 miles, I would have no qualms about doing that, none whatsoever. But the fact is, I'm not just walking distance, but I'm walking up and into a very cold, <laughs> I'm looking up at Mont Blanc, glacial, snowy environment, which is this one here. <laughs> and uh, it does feel imposing. It, it feels a little bit scary. Well, actually, we're not even going there today. We're going to Grand Paradiso, so whatever. But um, yeah, one step at a time, you know? That's literally what it's going to be. And hopefully in the forest on the mountain, I'm going to feel a bit better because it is really in nature that I feel like my best truest self. I'm looking forward to that, just getting grounded. And whew, I'm hoping that the pace isn't too fast and all the normal things that one hopes <laughs> when they join a group hike. So let's see how we go. All right, let's go. Let's go. Bam. Hey. Bam. Bam. Hello, hello. Whee. Yeah, that's after a quick pit stop for some final outdoor supplies, we headed out to cross the border into Italy. It felt amazing to finally be on our way, and the journey was a spectacularly scenic one. My question though is, does anyone else do this weird shaky leg thing when they're nervous? just like that, we had arrived. Next job was to get kitted up and headed on our way, with Refugio Chabot being our destination, some three hours hiking away. Despite the imminent set off, I just had to steal a few minutes to enjoy the scenery. Even the car park was beautiful. This was the Auster Valley, home to Torrente Savara, flowing proudly down from the glaciers above. Glaciers we soon would be ascending. So we are here, can you see? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is the hut, yeah? so okay. this is the way. Yes. First in the trees and then above the trees. This is Gran Paradiso, so tomorrow we'll go like this on the glacier, yeah. mm -hmm. up to this skull and then you kind of do this U-turn in the end, come to the summit from the back. Yeah. And then back. All right, first few steps along the trail have begun. We are in Gran Paradiso National Park. Just started from the car park, around 1800 meters. And I honestly, it feels amazing 
to be surrounded by mountains and water and trees and flowers and the familiar, if that makes any sense. Um, my mouth is bone dry, feeling so nervous still, but just really being intentional about this time and allowing nature to calm me down, work its magic, that's what it does best. Um, but anyway, everyone's looking very colourful with their rucksacks and gear on. This is it. Off to the hut we go. It's a decent view. We've arrived at this hut, which apparently the rangers use. I'm just going to take a little break place to fill up some water but we're sort of leaving the trees now and uh, the views are opening up and it's just it's so incredible just big mountains shadowing us as we're heading up and it's just I don't have the words I feel like I'm finally arriving in the landscape that we're in which feels good um, yeah I'm just looking forward to making progress and gaining elevation yeah I have a question for you all like what do you have a motto or something that you use when you're finding things hard like if you find these hikes difficult is there anything you'll go to mentally to push you forwards so when i'm on the bike my motto is it's up hill and i'm struggling every pedal stroke makes you stronger oh that's a good one how about you guys um i just try to be really mindful of what's around me okay like when i think when you're in beautiful places like this you just you know, get present just look outside probably it can be i did it before i'll do it again how about you Lars? i just try to think about anything else basically okay <laughs> yeah I try to just distract my mind from the uncomfort or pain or yeah that's good I just got these dwarf pines the alpine rose is also all along the path it's out of season now but there's still some like classic alpine fragrance filling the air from the flowers that are out. Yeah, it's good, really good. I have to say so far, elevation's just been really steady, nice and plodding pace. It's been interesting actually, because there's been a couple of helicopters coming and going, dropping some supplies to the huts, which is always really interesting to see just the very, significant part of some alpine culture um the hut systems and they're usually so hosp hospitable is that the word um welcoming and friendly and yeah can't wait to experience the vibes there when we get there ciao after leaving the cover of the trees and switch backing for a few kilometres, the horizon suddenly exploded into the sky as Gran Paradiso appeared, seemingly, out of nowhere. My first impressions were that it boasted a spectacular, pointy, triangular shape, and it certainly stood there, loud and proud. Jeez, so we've been, obviously, just continuously ascending, and now we've got the river, Gran Paradiso, sort of guardianing our path and then the glacier just tumbling down the mountainside I mean you can already see from here places that the glacier used to be and scoured away the rock uh, but even so it's exceptionally impressive can't wait to get a little bit closer with the ascent beginning to level out we were reunited with the Torrente Savara which in this rocky and remote landscape provides sustenance for a myriad of wildflowers, such as thistle flowers, adena stars, and my personal favorite, harebells.
Man, it feels good. We are just approaching the hut now. Um, sort of mingled with a couple of other groups as well. And people from all over the world, which is always really nice. Um, generally speaking though, not been too much talking. I think people just in their zone and thinking about what's to come and finding a pace and all of that. But yeah, it's gonna be nice to get to the hut. We've all heard good things about the hut and its food in particular. And there it is. Always such a comforting sight when you're in the mountains. <laughs> nice folks. Boom. 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 I realize I have a ring. Sorry if I destroyed okay. your hand. <laughs> can I yes, you can. <laughs> Sitting at 2,710 meters above sea level, Refugio Shabod sits in the heart of Gran Paradiso National Park and was first open in the mid-1900s. It couldn't be in a more picturesque location, surrounded on all sides by epic mountain scenery. All right, I'm just leaving my bag there. One of the things in these mountain huts or refugios is you have to leave your boots and ice axes and poles just downstairs essentially out of the way and there are always an array of crocs to choose from. Ah, crocs it's warm down here. Yeah. 42, that'll do. Yeah, We're going to be points. blue buddies. Oh hang on, yours are black. Oh, mine are black. Mine yeah. are darker blue. It's ready. so dark, I can't even tell. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> We've already just had a little lie down, and now the big boots, the crampons, and the harnesses are coming out. We're going to have a look, make sure they all fit properly, and then go back to bed. <laughs> Whilst this was not my first time using crampons, it certainly had been a fair while. Six years, in fact, since I had summited Mount Tubacul, the highest mountain in Morocco, in 2017. Thankfully, though, I had teammate Colin on hand to remind me how everything works. Oh, what, right or left? Buckle on the outside. Buckle on the outside, okay. Buckle on the outside. Oh, yeah. Squash it in, look. Yeah. Lift it up. So that's squashed in. Okay. And it's squashed in. So then that clips into your heel. Ah, oh, so that's what that lip is for. Yes. Pushes in. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's a good fit. So now we know that that one. Okay, so you just that all one the needs way. To be, that one is on your last hole. Yeah. So it is all, all the way all that across the last hole. Well, that one now should, if they're a pair. <laughs> yeah, if you've got two size feet, yeah, should squash in. So see, you get this little dimp here. Yeah. That you put just on the edge. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. through there. Okay. And what do you got now? The back. Pull it. Yeah, that was yeah, it. I door. remember. Yeah. God, it's been so long, man. Go through both. Okay. Through that one. Then through that one. And then it's probably going to be all the way. Pull it tight. Pull it tight. Tight. Okay, like a winch. And it's nice and tight. See where you can see where you can thread it through. Get it out oh, of the way. See where you can thread it through. Thank you. Cool. The crampon boot. Thank you. That's very cool. Then it was my turn. I'm pleased to share that Colin taught me really well and I fitted the other crampon with relative ease. Bish bash bosh people. Thanks, Colin. <laughs> So everyone's just downstairs having some cake and coffee and I thought I'd just take a minute to have a little conversation with you guys. A few weeks before coming out here, a couple of days ago, I was on the Oat route, which is a hike that goes from Chamonix to Zermatt. Uh, it was going to take me 13 days. Long story short, four days in, I pulled the plug. It's the first time I've ever done that on a proper long distance hike. 
And it was essentially because I felt like I'd just lost my mental resilience. I've lost control of my mental space. Um, and also physically, I just felt so weak and run down and I wasn't really sure what was going on. I had just done eight days hiking in the Dolomites, but it wasn't enough or tough enough to justify how rubbish I was feeling. In the Dolomites, I was also suffering from immense chest pain and palpitations and struggle struggling to breathe. Long story short, I came back to the UK, I've had a blood test and I've been diagnosed with anemia. Um, so the normal female low range of the measurement is 26 and my blood results came back as eight. And it definitely explains the chest pain, my struggling to breathe, the, the anxiety, the brain fog, the, the difficulty being present, like anemia sucks. <laughs> um, also probably struggling to be hydrated. And I'm just a bit scared because it's just making me feel so weak and so shaky. And I feel like I am having a severe confidence crisis. Um, last night in bed, I was like, this is just stupid. Why am I here? I shouldn't be doing this. Um, I explained those thoughts this morning. But I'm, honestly, I'm just struggling to breathe. I'm really struggling to calm down and actually get grounded. Like, it's almost like I have vertigo. Everything is slightly spinning. These are not conditions that you want to be experiencing when you're about to go two altitudes of 4,061 meters or whatever the height of Grand Paradiso is. But I'm just concerned because if on the mountain tomorrow I just feel too rubbish, everybody's going to have to come down. So I'm going to have a chat with Lars later and see what he says. Um, he's obviously the one making the final call. Well, I am the one making the final call um, regarding do I or don't I. Um, but his word is very, very important. Um, but reflecting on the day itself, it's just been stunning. So lovely through the forest, the, the beautiful crisp air as you got higher, the, the breeze just kept the edge off the heat and it's really, really enjoyable. I've I've really enjoyed the day's hiking. I would have liked to have taken it a little bit slower, not for an energy sense, but to capture more. Um, but on these types of expeditions, you have a pace, you have timing, so there's, there's routines you need to stick to. And I knew that that was coming. I feel like I've almost surrendered to that. I did push it a little bit. Um, but I think also the filming is, is making my head like whirl quite a lot. So I don't really know how filming is going to go tomorrow, depending on conditions, but my best is the, I'm going to do the best that I can. And that's the same with everything I throw myself into, do the best that I can. And I'm also really just, I, I'm learning through my trails this year that success is actually being harmonious within yourself about your decisions. It's not getting summit fever. It's not pushing past a certain point because you feel peer pressure or you've got an ego on your head. It's letting go of all of that. It's surrendering to the journey. And I feel like I'm in a pretty good place doing that. So I'd be in a better place though if I joined the others getting cake and coffee. So that's where we're going to go now. Woohoo! <laughs> also, this is our dorm. So Lars, Pavel, Colin, me, and Luca. That evening, a few of us headed out to watch the sun setting over the surrounding summits, and the process filled me with hope. I could feel the beauty building me back up, reminding me that what we think, we become. So, like the mountains, I resolved to have strong thoughts, hold myself tall, and move forwards with wisdom and courage. Tomorrow was a new day. climb everyone is getting ready we are geared up the wind has pretty significantly died down and i'm feeling ready to go as are the rest of the team let's get started on the trail <laughs> see you later hut off we go Yeah, it's fantastic because you can see the line of head torches going up the mountain, which is uh, incredible and I can't quite capture it because it's just a bit too dark for the cameras, but you can just see the skyline of the mountain ahead. It's reasonably clear and the air is so fresh.
All right, so this is it. This is the glacier. We've reached this point. Uh, we've just been told it's still covered in rock, so we're just gonna clamber up onto it. But yeah, it feels so good. So exciting. Okay, we've reached the point on the glacier where we're putting on crampons and helmets. Everybody is just here gearing up and it's definitely getting a lot lighter. have been roped up so we're officially attached to each other now guys these views are unbelievable we're officially roped up cramponed up and beginning our ascent onto the glacier um, but Pavel actually yesterday said something which I found really cool was that the darkest coldest hardest time is before the Sun comes up at least emotionally and uh, well, the Sun is coming up now <sighs> I'm still just really struggling to articulate this experience. It's just all happening. Um, helmet cam fell off already, so it's just a case of handheld. On we go. Let's see how well we can document this thing. It always takes a while to learn to trust the crampons. <laughs> this was the Lavid Chow Glacier, tumbling down the northwestern flanks of the mountain in frozen motion. We quickly learnt that it demanded not only energy to ascend, but caution to stay upright, due to the multitude of crevasses that crumbled across its surface. We had to work as a team to safely cross each deep fissure. When we weren't looking down though, a quick glimpse behind revealed a magnificent mountain sunrise. Slap bang in the middle, of which was Mont Blanc. There really are very few words to describe just how beautiful this is this morning on the glacier, seeing Mont Blanc above the clouds, the moon as well, still shining his face. Pretty soon it's about to get a little bit steeper. There are a number of routes to ascend Grand Paradiso, with both our route from Refugio Chabod and a similar challenge from Refugio Victor Emmanuel II being the two most popular with novice alpinists like me. I have to say, there were moments where I felt pretty badass taking on such an epic. I could see why people got into this thing. So Grand Paradiso is just around the corner to the left. Follow the line of people and you're gonna end up there. As the climb got steeper, my energy started to dwindle and I knew I wasn't alone in this. I felt an immense pressure to not let my team down. And weirdly, the camera during this stretch glitched out, capturing only blurry and distorted images, very much reflecting the tunnel-like vision I was experiencing. One step at a time, breathe, keep on keeping on. If there was ever a time to dig in deep, this was it. Swapping out our poles for ice axes, we crossed an exposed slope before joining a queue to tackle the final push to the summit. Here, I honestly had no idea what was coming next. Well done. Okay. Last push to the top. Oh, 
Didn't expect this. Breathing is good. Oh, right, this is hot. Oh, that's terrible. 4,061 meters above sea level. I'm not gonna pretend that I'm not hanging. This is it. All the hard work is for. Words cannot surmise the feeling of summiting Gran Paradiso, the great paradise. And although we didn't have too long at the summit, there was just enough time to wave to the Matterhorn peeking out above the clouds. I just can't stop smiling. I feel like my cheeks are gonna fall off. Just so happy. <laughs> Well, that is that. We have summited Grand Paradiso and we've just taken a moment to pause and take in the views. We've got the Matterhorn and Mont Blanc behind us and just an endless horizon of pure, awesome beauty. Um, I think we all faced some demons coming up there. I can say I certainly did. Um, I felt like I also had, uh, what's it called, like imposter syndrome. Like, gosh, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm holding everybody back, yada, yada. But it's just amazing what you can achieve through one step at a time. Um, at one point, I just started counting my steps. I got to 100, counted again. And it's not uncommon for me to have to do that when I'm out trekking by myself, mainly for entertainment's sake. Um, but just knowing that if you're willing to put in the hard work, you can access places like this. And don't get me wrong, the summit is halfway. There's still a fair distance to go. Um, but the sense of reward, I, I didn't expect to feel this elated right now. Uh, I think just in the preparation for this trip, Grand Paradiso was a step that had to be tackled in order to get to Mont Blanc. And I'm, I'm not even thinking about Mont Blanc. It's just, just we as a team have just summited the highest mountain in Italy. And it is unbelievable, actually. 4,061 meters. We've literally just been told we can put our ice axes in our harness. Just like that. I'm it's like a sword. It's very cool. There you go, that one. That's it. Oh, just slide it in here, but from the top. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. Understood. Cool. You can see the glacier here just tumbling down to the right. Um, you can see down below some bigger pieces that have fallen off, but we will just stop to appreciate its beauty. Um, and importance as well and I think actually I was just saying that whilst the summit has been super cool to experience is the glacier that's got me hyped we're just on something that has sculpted so much of the mountain landscapes that we love to get out in and enjoy it felt like a real privilege to be out on this glacier for they are some of the most rapidly changing environments of our time and the Alps is one of the regions where glaciers are shrinking the fastest. The rapid decline of these glaciers poses a significant threat to an array of animal species that live on or around glacial meltwater rivers, as well as a frightening array of other changes like increased likelihood of flooding, landslides and subsidence, never mind water shortages and the impact on the global food chain. So whilst these crevasses looked nice, and most generally didn't prove a problem for us, they were a constant reminder of the evolution of the ice. It was a thought-provoking descent. Jeez, crevasse after crevasse after crevasse. 
Eventually, though, it was time to say goodbye, and we soon reached the edge of the glacier. Well, here we are, back in the boulder field, or the scree field, or whatever it is. The more rain, there we go, left behind by the glacier. Crampons off. Happy days. With our crampons now in our backpacks, we made our way across the moraine we had traversed several hours ago. Only this time, we could actually see. It was astonishing, the rocky drama that lay around us, now clearly visible, as we made our way back down to the hut. Okay. So there's the hut, you can see it. It looks so little framed by the mountains, but really not far. We'll just drop down, loop around, and then boom, lunchtime. The feelings right now coursing through my system are utterly indescribable. The number of times I have said wow today are also uncountable. I just can't believe it. We've stood on top of the highest point in Italy and just taken out for what it is. Like last night, we, we stood outside and we watched the sunset. And we were looking up and it's like, guys, we're going up there tomorrow. And now we've been up there. And I've, I'm the first person to say I've had my doubts about my capabilities with this. And it's been a real mental battle, to be honest. Um, going up was hard. I found that difficult. But the beauty here is it's, it's, it's absolutely incredible. You know, we are walking in a landscape that is ever changing, ever evolving with climate. The glaciers are disappearing, the rivers are drying up, the rocks are falling, it is evolving, the wildlife is moving. It is not going to be like this in 10, 20, 30, 40 years. It doesn't really matter. It wasn't like this 100 years ago. <laughs> it was very different. And I think my one of my just greatest wow moments is just the glacier, just walking on this stoic beast that, I don't know, I just felt gratitude for, for all that ice. Like you're doing your part to hold our earth together. And that is my personal beliefs. And um, obviously it's a lot more to it than that, but yeah, it's just really, really humbling experience. And overall, this has been an incredibly humbling experience. And yeah, I think I was getting hung up on there being a certain type of person who does this and me not being that type of person because I just love nature and I want to celebrate it. And it's never about conquering the mountain, but about learning from the journey. So it's uh, been a real mind shift to basically just allow myself to settle in my truth. And I feel like I've carried that up the mountain and back down with me. And I'm chuffed to bits with how that's gone actually. And here it is, the hut. Job done, people. Job done. <laughs> it really does feel so good. <sighs> yes. Right. Thank you so much, Lars. No Couldn't have done it without you. Nice one, Colin. Feeling good? Good. On top of the world. Well done, mate. Good job. Good job. <laughs> good job. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, look who's arrived. Woohoo! Yeah. Mate, that's a proper fist bump. <laughs> <laughs> Boots are coming off. Oh, shit. That afternoon, there was little left to do but rest and recover. It actually hailed outside and cloud had engulfed the mountain, so we certainly had timed things perfectly. After a little nap and lots of cake, it was time to play some games. Good morning, folks. I've just come outside for a little bit of air and got a bit stuffy in our room last night. Um, and can I just comment on the air before anything else? It is so perfect. It is crisp. It is fresh. It is pure. It just puts a smile on my face straight away. It feels just so good to be in this incredible, 
place of natural beauty and that is down to the air that it breathes from every layer of, that you look at it um, but the air is just one of those things in the morning I just love to come out and capture and I'm not bothered that I didn't see the sunrise I mean the sun is rising over there anyway um, but you can see it's just illuminating this wall of mountains in front of us and just having those moments of myself looking up on the glacier, seeing the dots up there as they're making their way up and up and up towards the summit of Grand Paradis. So that was us yesterday, literally this time yesterday, the sun came up and we were on the glacier. We donned crampons and the journey had really begun on the icy stuff. Uh, but no, it's just, it's just taking that time to reflect on the importance of being in places that inspire you and places that allow you to be your best self but you come out here and you've pretty much just got marmots and other like-minded people and it's just it's really so special and not everybody is mountain people some people are ocean people and if you can just find your environment and your place that really makes you feel alive where you can thrive it's where you've got to be it's where you can set yourself up for the greatest success of living truest to yourself and your own ambitions how can you know what you want to do with your one wild life if you're not even in places that inspire you and I think coming out here with this incredible incredible raw beauty I'm just like on my knees it's just it's it's just it's taking my breath away time and time again I feel speechless it's wow is the only noise that I can really make and just smile and that is the ultimate thing I think that we can do for ourselves as people who love the natural world and being out in nature is not constantly strive and to be out more and grumble when we're not out is to carry that feeling that person that we are on the trail back home because that way we can share that version with our loved ones and yes I know it'll have to be slightly different but I think we owe it to ourselves to live true to who we are because the greatest thing we can give the world is our truest authentic self and if we're hiding away from that through technology, through work, through uh, systems and projects and whatever it is that, you know, home life can, can throw at us, then we're not really showing up as ourselves and that's not fair on us and it's not fair on the people around us. It's not fair, if I dare say it, on the planet <laughs> because we're all here for a purpose. Whether you believe it or not, you have a choice to choose that and to live that and I want to live that, I want to make my life count and I want to come out and do awesome things, I want to share those stories that hopefully empower you and others to get out and work through your boundaries and your obstacles, no matter how big or small, it doesn't matter, there is no judgement here, but this is just about allowing you to pick up your backpack of life and go on a hike and just make a story out of it because it counts and it matters and it doesn't matter if you're climbing the highest mountains, if you're scuba diving to the deepest depths, like none of that matters, if I'm, if I'm honest I don't really care, like what, what matters is that you're doing what you love and what you care about and that you're sharing that with the world in the best way that you possibly can because that is how you are bringing you to the planet and making your time here on earth count. And I think those are just some of my thoughts this morning. I just woke up quite suddenly with this like burning passion in my heart to just, I just needed to get out. I needed to breathe the air. I needed to just feel that sense of grounding and belonging that I haven't actually felt since arriving here because the intimidation has been too big. But now that that objective of climbing to the top of the mountain has been achieved, I can just breathe a lot deeper. My lungs are happy, my system is happy, my heart is happy. I just feel good this morning and I wanted to share that with you. So thanks for listening. Uh, I'm gonna get some breakfast now. <laughs> and um, yeah, then hike down to the taxi, uh, which we'll get back into France. And that is our Italian excursion over. And it's on to Mont Blanc that's what feels right. For now, I'm still not letting myself think about it. It's just one step at a time. Goodbye, hut. Thanks for being good to us. Paradiso so is gone for another day my friend and down into the forest we go Woohoo!
Here we are, back at the car park. Job done. Yes. <laughs> Come here. Oh, gelato. Yeah. Yes. Oh, good stuff. It was ages ago we were here. Here we go. Uh, that and this training. Low, low, yes. That's fine. We've got clothes for it. True. <laughs> Ever the wise one you are. <laughs> Well, if ever there was an exciting beginning, this was it. Now in Les Ouches, we had to purchase some tickets for the cable car that would take us to the tramway de Mont Blanc, which would then carry us further into the mountain and so on. But first, we met our second guide, Nacho, who would be joining us for the climb. How are you? Good. Oh, you brought the umbrella. I like Ready it. for the winter? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, because five minutes ago it was yeah. raining hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's sunny. Yeah, We're here. We take the lift. And we catch this little train. And here the tourists have to get off. Only the alpinists can go all the way because they're working on this thing here. Okay. okay. Then we go to the refuge. And tomorrow we go to good day, summit. And oh my god. Nice. This Bonkers. is very short, very uh, wrong distance. <laughs> <laughs> All aboard. Thank you very much, have a nice day. So we missed the train, um, so we're going for coffee. Woohoo! I don't like this alpinism. <laughs> it's not hard enough. <laughs> Please don't quote that to me tomorrow. <laughs> Actually, I've just realized where we are. So the Tour de Mont Blanc comes past the hut up there from Les Uches. You climb all the way up and then go over the top, or there's an alternative route around here somewhere. I remember you could cross over the railway tracks and stuff. That's so cool. Oh, it's a little bit comforting actually, because this, this is where it began. This is where the idea to climb Mont Blanc began, which was on the Tour de Mont Blanc. And right now we're on the Tour de Mont Blanc. It's like a full circle. I love that. This is where we catch the train. You can see all the people in the colorful waterproofs all heading up to Mont Blanc, well, the stations on Mont Blanc. Stampede, eh? It's like a concert. Oh, we're going to reach yeah. the summit first. No, we are. <laughs> Merci. On to Mont Blanc, people. Of course, <laughs> it's an awkward angle. All right, let's go. All right, no time for mucking around. We are on. <laughs> God, look how many people there are. Yeah. Jeez. But just like that, we've brought, caught the train up to this provisional station and now we're on our way. So it begins, Mont Blanc. Let's do this. And here's the station that's currently being worked on. Not for us. To be totally honest with you, this initiation into the ascent felt a little bit bonkers. There were people everywhere some following trails, others not, and it just felt like relative chaos. Now I knew why Nacho had an umbrella. It made him easy to follow. Joking aside, there was certainly no warm-up. 
As soon as we left the train, we just had one job, to walk uphill. Soon we were passing Caban de Rogne, a simple but effective shelter with two single beds bare of mattresses for emergency use only. It was here that the clouds began to nag and tempt us to layer up. With the temperatures dropping alongside, I held steadfast until the white stuff came in. Well, I gave up on the t-shirt. Waterproof is on for now. It's attempting to snow, so. So you can't see it, but the hut is over there, in the wilderness. <laughs> Are you happy, Lars? I just wonder why you're filming the mist. <laughs> well, because this is a reality, my friend. It is. It is. Some people can only ever dream about this. Yeah. <laughs> Snow in August. Exactly. It's so beginning to look a lot like August. <laughs> just past the checkpoint to make sure we're actually allowed to be on the mountain, which we are. And now there's a bit of snow and then up to the hut itself. Got to pay attention now. So just like that, the clouds have parted and uh, this is just unbelievable. It's so beautiful, really rewarding, you know. I know some people do this for a job, but <laughs> right now, even through my snow soaked sunglasses, it's just absolutely fantastic. Being able to see all the way down to the valley. And this is the hut hanging on the edge of the rock face. Phenomenal. And that's the end of our first day on Mont Blanc. Bish bash bosh. Oh, boots inside, eh? Empty box. Empty box. Empty box. <laughs> Base camp. Let me show you the view. Whoop. So this is our spot. Goodness me. Oh, and there's tomorrow's hut. That spaceship looking building. That's where we're going. I'm going to be looking down over all of this. Oh, also, that's not where we end the day. Mont Blanc's higher still. <laughs> and the glacier. Goodness me, this is just the most incredible, incredible experience right now. And this is where we're having lunch. This is our lunchtime view. In fact, we're sleeping here. You know what, if Mont Blanc doesn't happen, this is rewarding enough. It's just unlike anything else. Wow. Wow, wow, and wow again. <laughs> By now, I guess we all know just how much I love glaciers. And this was the Glacier de Bionese, sitting on the north face of the Aiguille de Bionese on the French-Italian border at 4,052 metres above sea level. I think you're having these top ones here. Yeah. Yeah, 55 to 58. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, God. This is dramatic. Thank 
Just emerging after a little nap. My eyes are <laughs> quite sore actually. I think I'm feeling the altitude ever so slightly. We are at 3,167 meters. Just checking the sign. <laughs> um, so we're well into the range in which you can start to feel the effects of altitude from dizziness to tiredness to shortness of breath to nausea to not feeling like eating. Um, and basically the best things you can do, take it slowly, rest, drink lots, and uh, well, acclimatize. And that's what um, Grand Paradiso was for, the acclimatization phase, as much as anything else. But I just wanted to take a moment by myself, outside of the dorm, outside of the hubbub of the hut, and just feel the mountains here. I'm not joking when I say I'd be happy to just end the trip here. Yeah, I think I was just trying to visualize standing on top of Mont Blanc and it is undoubtedly gonna be one of the most incredible experiences of my life. But <laughs> being out here with these massive mountains and the snow and the rock and it's such a foreign, different, unusual, uncomfortable environment where quite frankly, humans just aren't designed to be um, with the ascent and all the technical gear and everything that needs to be considered and my anemia in the mix and my mental health in the mix which is not really mental health I guess it's just like serious self-doubt um it's tough man it's really tough you know I'm I'm chuffed to bits that I actually enjoyed today yeah I felt good I felt good coming up I felt happy so I think tomorrow my main goal is just to get to the hut to the next hut so we wake up really early <clears throat> we go through the most dangerous part in the dark um, but that's because the rocks are frozen so this stretch is notorious for rock fall and if you go when the sun is up the ice is obviously melting and the rocks fall and they kill people quite frankly um, so we're gonna get through that get to the hut we shed some stuff we leave some things there and from there it's still another a best part of a th thousand meters of ascent <laughs> so I'm really just gonna check in and, and see if I've got the reserves to do that because it's not just getting up it's getting down and I think that's something that people just forget you know getting to the top is half way no matter the size of the mountain that you're climbing you always need to make sure you've got more in the tank to get yourself down safely um, but also the other thing is the weather isn't due to be very nice tomorrow it's used to be really windy really snowy really cold um, and whilst I think I'm half decently geared up for that uh, you know, there's a safety element. It, like, our guides are not gonna let us go up if it's unsafe, <laughs> if it's stupid to do so. So we'll see what happens. Um, I feel very indifferent about it. I just wanna reach that hut. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna feel absolutely elated reaching that hut. And then I'm just really intrigued because I know that I am gonna, when I get there, I'm gonna already have pushed through so much fear as a barrier so much anxiety as a barrier like by just physically being here on the ground right now like i am really showing up for myself and it feels cool <laughs> it feels like there should be like epic music in the background um you know the clouds are swirling around the alpine chuffs these little crow like birds are just cawing away and it's it's so hostile here um and yet it's just amazing because it's nature. This is na this is raw, pure nature, and and it's just, it's 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 inspiring me to push through these barriers and see what is on the other side of that. I think it's going to be a new piece for the puzzle of understanding who I am and what I'm capable of and what I'm comfortable doing and what I can do to prepare myself for difficult times in the future. And I guess the more of this sort of stuff you do, the better you get at handling these things. But that's just the same in life. You know, the more time we spend in that stretch zone, so you've got your comfort zone, your stretch zone, your panic zone, the more time you spend in that stretch zone, the more that stretch zone moves, it evolves, it grows. You expand as a person, you get more comfortable and that comfort zone expands and morphs and grows. And 
that's just the super cool thing about us as humans like we are never static we're entirely elastic like we can challenge ourselves physically mentally emotionally spiritually and we will grow but we have to go through that hardship in order to grow and i think that's just something i'm really experiencing like you're in i'm in the discomfort now we are in the discomfort now but we know that we have to go through that in order to get to the growth on the other side and it's just perseverance you know it's it's understanding that process it's showing up for that process sticking with that process and celebrating every step of the way Is this okay? Yeah. I think so, yeah. What do you think? Ready, steady, action. Yes, let's go. Boom. <laughs> Good morning, people. It is the day of Mont Blanc. Crampons are weird on this holy floor. <laughs> um, lay it up. Helmets on, helmet cameras on. Don't know how long it will survive. Gloves, stick. About to get roped up. We're in teams of three. We're gonna get through this call and uh, well, up to the first hut. As you can see, it snowed a little bit as well, which is quite cool. Um, whoops, I fell back down the mountain. <laughs> Off we go. What's the time? Time to go. Here we go, Mont Blanc, the day, just to the hut. Oh, look how good my pole is. <laughs> you guys, can you see that? This is a little camping area. These are the tents. Apparently there's people staying in there tonight. I'm impressed. <laughs> it was hard to believe that this was the moment everything had so far built up to. Our summit day of Mont Blanc, bringing with it a daunting looking ridge and the Grand Couloir notoriously the most dangerous part of the entire route. In these moments, I felt everything and yet nothing. It was like my entire being had snapped into focus at the enormity of the task ahead. I was certainly under no illusions that this would be easy, so resolved to give everything I had, pace myself and enjoy the journey. Famous couloir thingy. Couloir thingy. Nice. Couloir with all the rock holders. No rock holders today. Back there we go. Nice. Whoops. You just look at your feet, guys. Yeah. Go in the steps. Don't look up. I'll look up. The cold and snowy conditions meant that for now at least, the couloir was relatively safe with the rocks being frozen in place and unlikely to tumble down on us. This is, however, a place that will forever remain etched into my mind, as later on on our adventure, conditions were not so favourable. You good, Colin? Sweet. At more than one point, my heart was in my mouth with the sheer exposure of the route. And yet, I absolutely loved it. The slippery snow and ice just added to the challenge, and I learned a huge amount from both Colin and Lars as we climbed ever higher. Whoa. Yep. See the hatches there? Come out that far so far. But well, actually, no, we come from a valley, which is the green down there. <laughs> Just trying to find something to hold on to, I think. There you go. <laughs> yeah, put up again. They do. They do.
With the hut so close now, looming above us, everything was going as planned. And then my GoPro died. Thankfully, I managed to capture this arriving shot on my phone. Better than nothing, I guess. And here it is. So everything is steaming up because obviously we've come from the very, very cold to the nice and toasty. But we've made it, we've made it to the hut. It's just time to chill out for a little bit now, stock up on calories and sugar and warmth and charge some stuff and just generally get ourselves prepared for this very big push ahead. I mean, there are still many, many hours, but that was just unbelievable. I enjoyed every step of that ascent. Um, yeah, it just felt really, really good. And I'm just feeling absolutely elated right now. There are no words. Buzzing, 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 buzzing. Now it's just recharge. <laughs> That looked like whiskey then. <laughs> like, oh, <sure. laughs> it's sorting time now. It's basically thermals are on and I'm uh, going to head down and get prepared. Um, I'm going to leave a whole load of stuff here and this is really it. The tough bit. This is going to be a slog but I'm just going to show up for it one step at a time. <sighs> it's a lot of fiddly faffing, you know? Here we go. Initially, the steady plodding upwards felt comfortable but the huge white wall that loomed ahead certainly put a gasp in my chest. We passed a few folk on their way down and they had a weariness in their step that daunted me. In fact, the whole thing intimidated me. Suddenly, something clicked. I was on Mont Blanc, the highest mountain in Western Europe. And in fact, I was on my way to its summit. I had come so far, so why couldn't I make it to the top? I firmly believe that we have nothing in life if not belief. And in that moment, I finally believed and knew deep down that I was capable of achieving the goal that lay ahead of me. Wow, is that the summit? That's my blonde people. What the flip? Wow! Wow! Yep, and there it was. 4,810 metres above sea level. We can see the summit, that is Mont Blanc ahead, people. And just feeling like this is such a privilege, you know, to be able-bodied and be able to come up here and explore this landscape and to be able to share it as well for you guys who may never actually make it here you know it's such an honour not the top yet but even if this was it the joy is just radiating through my body and I'm hoping it's going to carry us right to the top Little did we know that this statement would be tested we were so close now but a secret force was at work. <laughs> the winds were picking up, walking was getting arduous, and the buffeting was real. By the time we reached the Valot hut at 4,362 metres, doubts were beginning to surface. Well, it's really good to eat it. it's we sheltered and donned extra layers, and I'm not afraid to admit that the strong winds were pushing me out towards the edge of my panic zone. It was an uncomfortable experience, and at times I felt out of control of my body. But we pressed on. Slowly, ever upwards, until our dreams of the summit were blown away with the winds. We could go no further. It's too dangerous to go on now, the wind is too strong as you can see, so we will never get to the summit. Maybe give it a try. It's not the uh, yeah, it's just dangerous. Okay. 
So it was there, huddled in a heap of three bodies, that we reached our personal summit, 4,454 metres above sea level. Tired, windburnt, happy. I actually had to hold my nose on the descent due to frost snip. Apparently the temperature was at least minus 25. But otherwise, we were safe and well. And to me, that was definitely the most important thing. How was that? Too much wind. Too much wind, yes. Where? No, just not even to the last thing I did. And this was our Mont Blanc adventure. Mont Blanc has attracted mountaineers, artists, poets and dreamers for hundreds of years to its slopes and summit. But one thing that filled my mind as I stole my final glimpse towards its bulk is that you can never really conquer a mountain. They've existed before us and will stand long after we're gone. Expeditions such as this can never guarantee standing on top of a summit. But more often than not, we are gifted with a story. And it's up to us how we translate it. We had reached the peak of what Mont Blanc was willing to give us on that day. So to me, this was our summit. And I felt immensely grateful for the rites of passage I had just endured. The mountain had gifted me so much more than its top. It was through the challenge and the worry that I had found my belief. And by persevering through a journey of fatigue, I had reached revelation. So rare is it in life that we're truly able to test our limits, to explore new horizons, both externally and in. And quite frankly, it feels pretty epic to do it in places like this. Back in the heart. Jeez. Boom. Everybody's saving the hut. Boom. <sighs> Back at the Guta hut, de-kitting was undoubtedly the hardest part of my day. And I took it really slowly indeed. Honestly, I had to fight not to fall asleep right there on the bench. And I really don't remember the last time I was this knackered. I just can't believe that experience. There's so much to tell you and express to you, but first, I have to collapse. <laughs> okay. <coughs> We've just had dinner, and uh, I'm just coming outside to just take a moment with you. I wanna share some of my thoughts and feelings about the day, this massive day. I want to share this view with you, this environment, this landscape, the good vibes, the exhaustion, everything that this trip has encompassed. And really, we've reached the pinnacle and uh, tomorrow we're heading down off the mountain. But we have achieved what we set out to achieve, which was to climb Mont Blanc. It doesn't matter to me that we didn't get our hands on the summit snow. We reached 4,454 meters in elevation. Mont Blanc to 4,810. That's close enough for me. <laughs> and the best part about it is we got back safely. And that is very often where mistakes are made is where people get that summit fever. They set their eyes on the prize and don't realize that the top is always halfway. You've got to have energy in the tank to get back and conditions change and we stayed safe thanks to the help of our guides today. And I just couldn't feel any happier. I don't even feel an inkling of disappointment. I feel, what do I feel? 
I feel elated. I feel really grounded and calm. And I think that's definitely to do with being in this environment, but it's also to do with how I have looked after myself through this trip. Um, I was inches away from not coming here for this week with Adventure Base, inches away. Um, I was so worried and anxious that I wasn't gonna be fit enough, that I was actually overtired from all of the trails that I've done this year. Um, that I wasn't recovered enough. I didn't have the right gear, on and on and on it went. But I just decided I just need to commit to getting on the plane. I need to get to Chamonix. Then when I got to Chamonix, it's like, right, let's get to Grand Paradis. So once I got to the first hut, it was like, let's give this summit a push, step by step by step. I wasn't even committed to doing Mont Blanc because I just felt intimidated by the, the package as a full. And I can say I have given this 100%. And to be honest, that was my motto today. That's what was going around my head is 100%, 100%, give 100%. And that means getting back up and getting back down safely. Even if the tank is pretty empty by the time I arrive back here, it's really just showing up for myself and giving 100% because something like this is not an easy thing. And uh, many things in life are not easy. You've got to keep showing up for the grind, day after day, step after step, and that is how you succeed. And in order to do that, you've got to commit over and over again and give 100%. And I feel like that's definitely been one of my takeaway themes from this journey, is just showing up step by step and always giving 100% to that individual step that you take. Make sure you get your form right, make sure you get your breath right, make sure you get your mindset right, commit to it, take it, move on to the next one. And just like that, you find yourself almost <laughs> on the top of Mont Blanc. And I'm just, I'm just lost for words. You know, it's, it's been so humbling to share this experience with you, as it always is. Um, this has definitely been a different trip to the usual backpacking films that I make. But I hope that I have created a film that has inspired you to dream big, push boundaries and climb to high, wild places and just really immerse yourself 100% in the pure beauty of nature. You know, this is our home, this is planet Earth. We have one life, we've got to use it. You know, No one can take away the fact that this is part of my life story now. And it's important that we spend time in places that inspire us and this landscape has inspired me. So there we go. That is the end of my Mont Blanc journey with Adventure Base. As I say, I really hope that this has inspired you to explore your own horizons and uh, actually just remind you that you are always capable of more than you think. And I know it's a very stereotypical saying, but it's so true. And the only way you can really embed that in your self-belief is to practice that, to do things that are not easy <laughs> and to learn from the mistakes that you make along the way, to build friendships that last for a lifetime and experience landscapes that take your breath away time and time again. So thank you to Adventure Base for inviting me along for this trip. Thank you to Lars and Nacho, our guys that kept us safe on Grand Paradiso and Mont Blanc respectively. And thank you to you guys for following along on my journey, for supporting me every step of the way. And I hope I can do the same for you too on your own personal journeys. Until next time, enjoy your adventures wherever they may be and stay wild. <laughs> Well, the look at the colours, the sky is, is, wow, full stop, no, rub that out, exclamation mark. <laughs> Whew. The next morning, after a bit of a lion, we began our solid day's journey back down to the Chamonix Valley. I wanted to keep a bunch of this footage in. As I've already said, the summit is technically halfway, and the descent, for that matter, was no easy feat. We headed off across the snow to the top of the Guta Ridge, peering down over the edge to the Tete Rus hut far below. There was considerably less snow now, but we kept our crampons on for ease where it lingered. I have to say, I found the going up far easier.
could sell that in our razor shop. <laughs> All blunt. An hour and a half later, we reached the Grand Couloir. No longer was it frozen, and rocks varying from pebble hmm. to boulder size were tumbling down at random intervals. Oh, that's have? a big one, though. You could hear the rocks falling, and so all senses were officially on extra high alert. It comes in waves always. You're going to wait a bit. <laughs> Probably just because like one thing melts, drops off, knocks other things off. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. And then they all fall down. Oh, that's a bigger one. All right. You see most of them fall in that very last bit. Yeah, and that non-snowy bit. I'm gonna try to go really fast there. Okay. But again, don't trip and fall down. No. It's kind of walking really fast, don't run nothing. Do, do I go first still? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Wait a second. So yeah, and we, we don't talk. No. Nope. Yeah. You wanna hear the... Right, let's go. Fantastic, Olive. Yeah, that's good. Go, go, go. Okay, go, 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 go. Ahead. Okay. Okay, come down. <laughs> That's us sitting up with us. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, yeah, man. Nothing fell. <laughs> nothing fell. You see, it comes in waves, so there's nothing now. That was exhilarating. <laughs> so, yeah, we made it for a second time. And I really don't envy the guides and leaders who cross tens of times in a season with clients. It is customary to signal to those above that the rocks are not falling, as it's easier to see up rather than down. Then, before we knew it, we were back at the Teterus hut, ready for a short break. Only here, all hell broke loose, and we witness just how quickly things can change in the mountains. Viewer discretion is advised from here forwards, following images that some may find distressing. Thus followed a heartbreaking story. A man had been seen falling from the Grand Couloir. Lars had heard him scream and saw the fall. And it turns out that this person had been hit by a falling rock and, not roped up, had tumbled two to three hundred metres down the gully. We had passed this man just 15 minutes earlier us heading down, him heading up. And no doubt he would have been full of hopes and dreams, just as we were. Now though, it was all over. He was dead. The rest of our group were still on the hill, so we waited for them to arrive before heading off to finish what we had come here to do. Get back safely to Chamonix. In these final hours on the mountain, I could barely breathe for the gratitude of my life and that I was safe and well, as were my team. Heading into the mountains, or indeed engaging in any sport or activity, is always inherently dangerous. There is a level of risk and chance accidents happen. However, what is more dangerous, to me at least, is only ever letting our dreams stay as a fantasy. Life is fraught with challenges and reasons not to do something. 
and realizing your aspirations <coughs> is hard work. It's not an easy path, and that's why mountains are so often used as metaphors for life's goals. But here's the thing, it is never too late to gather the courage to get up and go. Start small, embrace the setbacks, and grow through the experience in all of the mess that might follow. And pretty soon, if you give 100%, you too will have an awesome story to share to inspire others to tread wild paths. Remember, believe you can. Get up, get out, and spend more time in the wild, one step at a time.